Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today's video is a video I've been meaning to do for a while now. I put a poll up in my Facebook group asking you guys what your favorite reverb plugin was and the consensus has been Pro R by FabFilter and Valhalla Room by Valhalla. If you're interested in getting involved in the community and helping to determine future videos, make sure to go in the description below, click on the link and join the Facebook group. I might even feature you in a future video. Today's video is a comparison between Pro R and Valhalla Room to help you guys consider which plugin might be better for you. Without any further ado, let's hop into the studio and get started. Awesome guys, so we are in Ableton Live as you can see on the screen here. This is my DAW of choice. Uh, let's get a few disclaimers out of the way. There is no objective winner to this video. Both reverbs are very, very capable and they can do exactly what you need them to do. The tone in each and the way they approach reverb just vary just a tad between the two. We're going to go ahead and do a basic feature run over of each of the two plugins. We're not going to go too in depth. And if you guys want to learn more about these reverbs, make sure to check out the links to each reverb plugin in the description below. And you can go on the manufacturer website and learn as much as you want about them. We're going to have three examples for each of the reverbs. We're going to do a guitar, vocal, and synth sound. And we're going to play with the settings for each of the reverbs until we have it to where I think would be a suitable level. And then we're going to compare and contrast between the Valhalla Room and the Pro R reverb settings for each. The example sounds used in today's video are from three different packs. The first of which is the guitar sample from Mode Audio's Float Pack. It's a great guitar pack. The second from Zara Taylor's uh, vocal pack from Black Octopus. And the third from Wolfgang Gartner's signature pack from Splice. To start things off, let's go into the plugins folder and drag in Valhalla Room. We're going to start with the guitar sound here. And let me give you a basic rundown of what is on the screen here. This is the newest version of Valhalla, so it is scalable. It may not look like normal. That's because it is the new version, the electric blue skin. You can change it to the old school if you'd like. Um, but we're going to go over the basics of some of these settings here. So. We have the basic reverb settings here. This is the pane where you're going to be doing most of your reverb work here. This is the mix amount. Obviously, this is the amount of reverb in your signal chain. Um, if you have a sound and you have it at 50%, it's going to affect 50% of the signal that goes through this reverb. If you have it on an auxiliary bus, like a send or return channel, you might want to keep this at 100% and dictate the amount of reverb via the send or return knob. We have the pre-delay time, which is the time it takes before the reverb goes into effect. This parameter can differentiate when the reverb starts after the sound ends. You usually keep that relatively low unless you want something that sounds like an echoing back at you, and then you can turn it up. Next is the decay time. This is the most obvious setting, the amount of time it takes for the reverb to decay outward after it's been activated. This is immediately following the pre-delay time. Then we have the high cut, which is essentially a post reverb EQ. This allows us to cut the highs off, as it says right here, at whatever frequency level we set. So maybe you want to have a reverb in the low end of the spectrum. You might want to cut this down to maybe 5000 hertz or below, and maybe that will cut out the top end of the sound so you don't get all that high information. Maybe you want a really bright reverb. You keep that up as high as you want, etc. The depth parameter is just that, the depth of the reverb. It actually, if you want to get technical, controls the balance between the early and late reverb decay times. By default, you're going to want to stay on the early setting here um, because the early send amount dictates how much of the signal is actually sent to the late decay. Um, these are all parameters for shaping the way the reverb sounds. Um, let's say the early size is the amount of time it takes before the reverb starts to activate the early cross is the stereo spread modulation rate creates like a chorus effect etc you guys again can go on the manufacturer website and look into what all of these do um, i don't want to make this tutorial too long late parameters here control all the late reverb settings and again that is dictated by the amount of signal you send to the late setting here via this early send knob Last but not least, we have reverb modes. These create the illusion of being in different spaces. I usually typically keep this on large room. That's uh, my favorite sounding one, but there's other options that you can go through here. And of course, you have presets so that you can save the reverb settings that you want or load in preset settings that Valhalla comes with. 
Let's go ahead and disable Valhalla now and load in the FabFilter Pro R. We're going to drag that in here. Now Pro R takes a very different approach to the Reverb UI here. Um, it goes for a more user-friendly interface with more visuals. Um, we're going to go ahead and explain what all of these do. Let's move this here. Um, the brightness is as it sounds the tone of the reverb, dark to bright. Dark is more muddy, bright is more in the high end, kind of tinny. Uh, clean and chorus, you can adjust the character of the reverb. Chorus is more of that old school digital chorus -y sound, um, almost as if you dragged a chorus effect onto the reverb. It sounds somewhere between a reverb and a chorus effect. And then clean is just a reverb effect, obviously. Distance is pretty self-evident here, close or far. Creates the illusion of a reverb being farther or closer away. The space parameter here is essentially the same thing as the room size on the other reverb. Uh, this is the amount of space in milliseconds or seconds that the reverb is sitting in. The space setting here is essentially the same thing as the room type in the other reverb. Uh, you can essentially assign how big of a space that you want the reverb or the sound affected by the reverb to be sitting in. Very cool. The decay rate is the amount of time it takes to decay outward that kind of falls back to the space again stereo width obviously is the width of the reverb as uh, the left and right versus mono you can get more into that in my video on creating depth within a mix you can click on the link above me right now in the upper right hand corner and check that video out mix is the same as before it's the amount of signal that is affected going into the reverb then we get to the bottom part of Pro R, which is the coolest part in my opinion. It's a very visual way of looking at uh, your reverb. So on the right hand side here you can see it says post EQ and it's this yellow color that corresponds to this band here. It shows plus 12, plus 6, 0. Obviously this is the amount of decibels that is coming through. And then on the left here we can see decay rate EQ. 200%, 100%, 50%, etc. So what these bands actually do is the decay rate allows you to assign how much reverb is affecting a certain uh, frequency range. So you can see down here at the bottom we have 20 to 20,000 hertz and you can actually pull out, let's say you have a snare and it's ringing too much at 100 hertz and you don't want the reverb to affect that region, you can go ahead and scoop that here. Maybe we'll go to the scoop and then pull 100 hertz out. But basically this allows you to control which frequencies of the sound are actually getting that reverb effect. The bottom one here, the post EQ, is just that. The EQ that affects the signal after it's gone through the reverb. And you can actually go ahead and scoop out the top or what have you, depending on what you need for your mix. You have a customary pre-delay time down here as well, in addition to all the other settings. So those are the basic settings of each of these reverbs. Now we're going to get onto examples and practical application. We have a guitar sound, a vocal sound, and a synth sound. And we have both of the plugins loaded on each of these. I'm going to make a quick preset for each of these reverbs, and we're going to compare and contrast them on screen here. So to start things off, we're going to go to this guitar channel here. We're going to enable Valhalla Room, and we're going to set the sound playing so we can work on a quick preset. Let's give this a play. <laughs> So immediately we have too much reverb here. I'm going to cut the mix down to maybe 25%. Let's give this a play. Maybe reduce the high cut just a tad so we aren't getting so much of a bright signal. Reduce the pre-delay time. Increase the decay time. Maybe decrease the high cut even more. Increase the decay time. And that's just a quick and dirty reverb setting for Valhalla Room here. If you're interested in making your reverbs fit just a tad better into your mix, this is a quick tip. You can actually calculate the length of reverb time based on the BPM of your song. I think I'll do a video on that in the future. If you're interested in that, make sure to let me know in the comments below. So now we have a Valhalla preset here. Let's give it one more play. And that's about where I would have it in a mix. Let's go into Pro R here and get a preset going for it as well so we can compare the two. Again, let's reduce that mix. Maybe increase the space just a tad. And as you can see, you can actually visualize where the reverb is decaying outward. 
I'm actually going to pull some of those highs out. Then we can go ahead and adjust the distance time maybe a little bit. And then maybe give it a little bit more of a chorusy character. Get a little bit darker. Give it a little bit more mix. And that is essentially where I would have it in Pro R. So let's go ahead and A, B these two reverb plugins against each other just so you can get an idea of the tonal effects of each. Cool, so next on the agenda is a vocal. Let's go ahead and load each of these plugins back onto this channel here. Let's disable Pro R for the time being, and then let's go into Valhalla and play with these settings. In the ways of the week, the time's been bleak, I know. You're the fight, the cream, the strength in me. And that is essentially where I would have Valhalla. Let's go ahead and do a Pro R preset now. In the ways of the week, the time's been bleak, I know. You're the fight, the cream, the strength in me, I know. And that is basically where I would have Pro R as well. So let's go ahead and do another quick A and B on these two plugins here, just so you get an idea of each. In the ways of the week, the time's been bleak, I know. In the ways of the week, the time's been bleak, I know. Last but not least is the synth sound. We're going to go ahead and load in Pro R and Valhalla. I'm going to go ahead and disable Pro R yet again, and we're going to dial in some effects for this sound. <laughs> And that's just a tad of reverb with a little bit of a chorusy effect um, for that synth. Let's go ahead and do Pro R now. <laughs> And that is basically where I would have Pro R. So let's go ahead and do a quick A and B of these two, and then we'll wrap this up. I would personally say that there isn't one better reverb of these two. If I had to go with one, I would probably go with Valhalla because of its price. Pro R comes in at about 200 US dollars, whereas Valhalla comes in at 50 dollars. Valhalla is very famous in the dance music world, while FabFilter Pro is notoriously transparent. And again, these reverbs are very similar, and you, as you can see, you can get the job done with both. I don't think there is an objective better reverb. They're both subjectively different for what you need to do. Let me know what you think of these two reverbs and what you would prefer to use in the comments below. Make sure to give the video a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and let me know why in the comments below as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I make a video every Wednesday and Friday. And I am Julian of Julian Gray Media yet again, and I will talk to you later. Bye.